Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Cover crops have been used for millennia to improve soil structure while adding nutrients. It's also said to be one of the more sustainable practices for agriculture. A cover crop or green manure is when you grow plants for the specific purpose of reducing erosion, increasing soil fertility and water retention, while assisting in the management of weeds, pests and diseases. Depending on the species used, cover crops may provide a variety of these different benefits. In order to get the maximum benefit out of a cover crop, you want to make sure that you either till it into the soil or mow it down right before or after it flowers. Elliot Coleman's Four Season Harvest goes through how and where to use cover crops. There has been a ton of research on cover crops completed, and a great article that I found that was published in the Journal of Weed Management was put together by researchers at Penn State University, and they went through top to bottom the summary of today's literature on cover crops. So now let's go through the scientific investigations on the benefits of cover crops. I'm going to go through it in a specific order. First I'll start with erosion, then weed management, organic material addition, beneficial organisms, nitrogen fixation, disease management, and cost effectiveness. Thousands of studies worldwide have shown the effectiveness of plants like cover crops in reducing erosion. In order to use a cover crop to reduce erosion, you'll want to plant it where traditionally there would be bare soil. The roots below the surface are able to stabilize the soil, while the plant above the surface is able to dissipate energy of the rain falling and then the water running. By dissipating this energy, you're actually able to increase water infiltration into the soil while reducing the water's ability to pick up soil and nutrients and run off with it. An added benefit of using cover crops to help reduce erosion is this is traditionally where weeds will show up. The simple presence of the cover crops will help suppress weeds because they'll be competing for the space to grow. When researchers compared cover crops to traditional herbicide applications, similar weed suppression levels were achieved. This is extremely significant because these weeds are less likely to adapt to a cover crop competition scenario as they are to adapt to different herbicides and becoming super resistant. So we now know that cover crops reduce erosion and help suppress weeds. So what do the plants themselves add to the soil? Low levels of organic material has been correlated several times to decrease production. This is due to an increase of compaction, decrease in nutrient and water retention caused by the lack of organic material in the soil structure. Cover crops are an effective way of adding organic material to your soil. Simply allow them to die through winter or chop and drop them and you'll leave the organic material in place of the plant and its root system. The organic material will return nutrients to the soil that may have otherwise leached away during the growing season and as it decays it'll improve your soil structure. When cover crops are chopped and dropped and left in the mulch layer it's been shown in a number of studies to increase the biomass of beneficial organisms. For instance, the biomass of earthworms increased when cover crops were used in the production of corn. These researchers thought that the seven times increase in the biomass of earthworms was likely to do with the use of cover crops and a no-till garden method. Earthworms eat the decaying layer of the mulch layer. They leave behind plant available nutrients, beneficial bacteria, and plant growth hormone. The worms are able to recycle surplus nitrogen. The cover crops take up the surplus nitrogen, incorporate it into their structures, and when you chop and drop it, you return it to the nutrient cycle. Otherwise, during the growing season, this nitrogen may be lost during denitrification or simple leaching out of the area. Now that we've taken a look at the benefits that cover crops can have above the surface, let's go below the surface. Legume family crops like peas and beans are able to form a beneficial relationship with soil-borne bacteria. They trade sugars that they produce in photosynthesis for plant available nitrogen that the bacteria fix from the atmosphere. The nitrogen fixing bacteria that form this relationship live freely in the soil and in the presence of legume family crops, they increase in numbers as the plant produces this hormone and starts giving them sugar. In fact, the plant actually encapsulates them in root nodules. These bacteria have colonized most of the soils on earth at a baseline level. And in the presence of the legume family crops, they increase in concentrations. And once the legume family crops are gone, they go back down to baseline levels, but they're there in most soils. 
generally speaking when you're purchasing cover crops from a company. There's also inoculants. Generally speaking, you don't need these inoculants. In your garden soil right now, there are plenty of bacteria that if given the opportunity will form this beneficial relationship with the legume family and fix atmospheric nitrogen, making it plant available. The bacteria in these inoculants usually are killed through the shipping or the storage process. Even if they make it to your house alive and are applied alive, it's generally one or two species and they will be outcompeted by the natural endemic species of your own garden. Cover crops can not only feed your plants directly in the soil where they need it, but they can protect them as well. Researchers found that disease and pest damage was reduced when you use cover crops. This is because often when you use a cover crop, you use a no-till garden method, resulting the spores that cause diseases are not able to actually get to the plant because you're not disturbing the soil. The cover crops also provide a great habitat for the predators that feed on the pest species that eat our crops. The presence of cover crops also helps mask or hide our crops of interest from the pests. There are also some reports that common cover crops have allopathic properties which help reduce or fight nematode infections. However, during the preparation for this video, I was unable to find supporting research for this fact. The use of cover crops to suppress disease and pests is a very species-specific relationship. So you want to take care that if you do have a problem and you are going to use cover crops to fight it, that you get the right species for the job. So far today we've been able to show that cover crops reduce erosion, suppress weeds, reduce leaching, and increase water retention, all the while adding organic material to your soil fighting diseases and adding nitrogen. But is the practice really cost effective? Unlike the other free and local resources that we've been speaking about over the last few months, you'll likely have to buy the seeds for your cover crops. It can be done with common varieties that produce food for you. However, the varieties that are specific for cover crops are more effective. If you use herbicides for weed suppression because cover crops were able to perform the same as them, you're able to save the cost of the herbicide itself. If you grow organically like I do, you'll be able to save time through the weed suppression by simply not needing to weed. Next, let's compare the nitrogen fixed by cover crops to more traditional synthetic fertilizers. Researchers found when applying varying rates and using cover crops that they were able to achieve a one-third reduction in synthetic fertilizers when tested in a commercial farm. This one-third reduction in the cost of the synthetic fertilizers was more than enough to account for the seeding and management of a cover crop. So to answer our question about cost effectiveness, I find cover crops are a very cost effective tool in my garden. You're also reducing the risk to the environment caused by nutrient and herbicide leaching that can cause eutrophication and environmental damage elsewhere. Today we spoke about cover crops and they did not disappoint. They reduce soil erosion, increasing soil fertility and water retention, while assisting in the management of weeds, pests, and diseases. One downside of cover crops is they compete for water and nutrients that are available in the soil. However, these are not big issues as in our home gardens, we're not usually reliant on just the rain to provide the moisture in our garden. And usually, most home gardens, especially if you're using free and local resources, generally have surpluses of nutrients found within the soil. So, the cover crop is not competing for the water, and if it does, we have the ability to water it. And it's not competing for the immediately available nutrients that your other crops need. Through this process of scientific investigation, we've been able to support some of the practices and resources available to organic gardeners, while eliminating ones that are ineffective or downright harmful. By adding cover crops to the list of supported practices, we now have another tool available to us that can help us in a number of different ways. The practice of using cover crops in your garden has similar benefits to the use of used coffee grounds and say comfrey. The difference is, is it recycles in place phosphorus and potassium while adding atmospheric nitrogen into a plant available format. So we may be able to use this as a tool to balance some of our nutrients within our garden. The supported practices of using fall leaves, comfrey, used coffee grounds, and now cover crops allow us to improve the soil structure 
increase the number of beneficial organisms, and help the nutrient cycle in our gardens. And ultimately, these four practices have allowed me to forgo any store-bought products and fertilizers. If you missed any of the videos that we've spoken about today, I'll provide a playlist at the end of this video. The playlist will contain not only the practices that are supported, but the practices that are not supported or that are harmful to your garden. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much. And I hope you have a fantastic day.